Hello uh, and welcome to the exciting conclusion of uh, creating a 2D game. Um, today we're going to look at um, implementing our player health. As you can see we created our um, HUD or heads up display in our last video as you can see here and now we are going to um put this all together in um a bright um but yeah with a with a ui system and make it implement and work um all okie koki and dandy so um it's essentially um a quite heavy scripting in this session so um if things aren't working in previous videos um look back at those make sure it, you everything is working hunky dory up until this part and then we'll um get over this kind of this hill um within this session okay cool so what we need to do first is um let's have a look at what scripts we have and um as you are rightly uh are rightly thinking we created a canvas and we've created um a HUD so and we're not talking to this HUD system yet so we need to talk to this um, HUD system which we'll, uh, we'll do in a second with a UI script and um, so what we're going to do is jump into our player script there it is and what we're going to do is we are going to uh, let's have a look so we already have our um, get and set health here Okay, from I think I damageable. Yeah, there we go. From our I damageable. So that's a part of that contract, as you can see here. Um, so let's implement that in. So we can easily say, um, what do we have? We have four hearts here. So let's say under void start, let's say health equals four semicolon. Fine, that absolutely sets it up. Um, as we can say in if we were setting up the health in um, our skeleton we can set that to something else as well um, which I think we did I think it's only three hits um, but we're going to be dying after four okay so if we go down to our damage oh actually this not worry about that for now so what we're going to do with this we're going to save that I always forget this, so I always make sure I do this at the start when I'm do, implementing a health system. So put that at the start, that sets us off on a good road. We're going to go back to Unity. We're then going to I'll let that implement, that's fine. Um, we are then going to right click, oh, what am I doing here? Crikey, uh, let's delete whatever that is. Um, yes, I've dragged that out of somewhere. Oh, what am I doing? Let's go back. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to right click, go to create C sharp script, and I'm going to call this UI manager. Cool. Um, once I've done that, I'm going to drag my UI into my canvas. So if I click on canvas, we can see we've got all this, and then right underneath, I have my UI manager, so it's already implemented in. Fantastic. So I'm going to double click on my UI manager. Um, start an update. Are we going to need those? No, let's get rid of those. We don't need those. So um, I want my UI to, number one, talk to my um, the UI within my game. And we do that by implementing that up here. So where it says uh, using Unity Engine, yep, we can also say using Unity uh, Engine dot UI semicolon, and that will talk to all of the components within the UI system that we need to or um, that we have to. Um, so that will help us talk to our UI system, or if you want to add any more sort of text or anything in there, we can then manipulate that as well. Um, we then need to create um, an instance. And an instance is um, a quick kind of, almost like a small method where we can 
quickly go back and forth talking to another script and that script will be um, our player script or this will allow any script. So um, initially we are going to say private, uh, private and we can write static and then we can write UI manager, where's UI manager? There we go, UI manager and then we're gonna say underscore instance semicolon we then can say a public static uh, UI manager again do 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 UI manager and we're just going to call this instance and then we can do some semi um, curly brackets for that um, I'm going to change that to a capital I for instance and then we can say um get and then we can say return so and then so what we're essentially saying is um we're going to grab an instance is going to be anything that we grab any other scripts that we grab um from unity to talk to and um can manipulate or grab any kind of methods or variables from um, other scripts, vice versa with the UI manager as well. And this just essentially allows that. Um, and to make sure that our script is going, uh, this script is going to work, this is almost just like a precaution, almost like a debug. So what we can write is a quick private void awake. And we can say, uh, oh yeah, there we go. Private void awake. And all we can say is instance equals this. So what this is saying is it, um, a private awake, private void awake is almost like a private void start where at the start of the game, everything, all of our scripts kick in and all of our implementation kicks in. Um, but that only run runs once, as we know. Awake is exactly the same, but you can tell it when to become awake. So um, we're not in this instance, it's just gonna become awake and we're gonna make sure this, um, we're saying instance, which is the implementation that we are going to use between our player and the UI script is going to work when awake works. So uh, pretty much it is void start. But um, I've just said awake just as, to use something a little bit different. Um, so if that doesn't work, we will get an error. So we know, so that's the kind of where the debug um, kind of information comes from there. Cool. So what we're then going to do is we can then start to look at um, creating another variable for um, our UI manager. And um, what we want to do is we want to implement these hearts, don't we? So as you can see here, we've got these units, and let's say we want we want exactly this. We want this to um, be enabled, but then once we get hit by our skeleton enemy, um, we lose a heart. We then lose heart three, etc., etc. Okay. So um, and these icons are seen as images within Unity. So we need to call these images up and implement that um into our script okay um so this will work so if we um i think we can use image let's give that a try so if we go public because we want it to be seen we can say image we can then do two um just kind of uh, rigid brackets i'll call them and then we can call these heart units because that's what's gonna be implemented into those images. So we're gonna have four images and we're gonna call them heart units. Um, we then can quickly save that. So write that down. So just do public image with the brackets and then heart units. If you have hearts, if you have something else like life bar, you can write life bars or something like that. That's entirely up to you what you write here. So what we're gonna do is save this script very quickly Cool, let's make sure we've got no errors, that's good. We've already implemented our UI script into Canvas. So if we go down here, you can see under our UI manager script, we can see we have heart units. If we click on this, we then have something called size. And that's where the brackets are coming in. 
okay? So um, we can dictate this and let's call this four because we have four lives as we've got here. So there we go, we've got zero, one, two, and three. So this is where it might get a bit confusing where zero is technically the first number within Unity. So you've got zero, one, then two, then three, um, but we still have four images. So what we're gonna do is drag each of our units. So if I drag unit one into there, then unit two, let me do, make sure I do this in order, unit three and unit four. Lovely, so they've all been dragged in here in order. And now, now they're implemented as elements, we can now um, call these up with in Unity. So what we're gonna do is just click on our game, make sure you control S or command S that, so we're saving our game. And then we can jump back into our script. Do we need to be on our UI? Yeah, let's be in our UI. Okay, so we need to create a new method. So let's just create that under here, under awake. And what we're gonna call this is, um, we're updating our hearts, aren't we? So we can call this, um, do, 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 or you can call it update lives, it's entirely up to you. Um, I'm probably gonna call it, yeah, I'm gonna stick with lives, that's pretty good. So if I say public void update lives, I then can say, they are going to be an integer of lives remaining. So this is something I'm creating, don't worry. So that's going to be a um, uh, just a method variable for um, this method. Cool. And then we can say, uh, this is where it's going to get a little bit confusing, okay? So if we write four, we can say um, an integer of um, this, what can we represent our images as? Uh, let's just say I as an image. I is an image, okay? So for, um, every I represents those hearts, okay? Or you could do H or something like that. So we can say I um, is an integer of I is equal to zero because that's our first our first element as we see here is oh not there let's click on our canvas and we can see there element zero is zero is um our first heart we can then say um if i is less than but equal to lives remaining i might just make a space there as well so it's clearer to see we can then say i plus plus okay so with that we can say if i oh brackets one way around if i equals equals lives remaining we can say health um what do we call these heart units didn't we heart units we can say not health units heart units brackets i because that represents our image dot enabled equals false okay so we're essentially saying every time we take away an I, so we're starting with zero, that represents our lives remaining. We're gonna take one away, okay? And then we're gonna, as we can say, um, if there are um, if an I equals equals lives remaining, heart units with our image is gonna become false every time we get hit, okay? Cool. Um, that's looking good, confusing, I know, but hopefully this will work. Let's save that. So let's go over to our player script because that's where our health is hanging out. That's what we did right at the start. So we go to our player script. Let's go to our void damage. Let's put something under here. So 
we can say do, 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 um, for our player script under our void damage, we can say health. This is just like the skeleton script is minus minus um, semicolon. We then need to grab our UI instance. So we need to grab the method for, um, we need to grab this whole method here. So update lives. So let's say, because we've created an instance now, we should be able to grab this nice and easily if we type in UI manager dot instance. Um, and then that should be dot update lives. Let's try that dot update lives. Bracket, bracket, semicolon. It doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like that? Oh, because I need to say it's affecting health. There we go. Fantastic. Cool. Right. Let's save this. So what we're saying is health minus minus will take a, a, um, a life away. We're then saying our UI manager dot instance um, dot update lives. So we're grabbing that whole instance is allowing us to grab a whole method of update lives and implement that here as well, as well as updating our, um, our UI. Okay. So this should, I'm just going to double save these again and make sure these are working. Let's see if we've got any issues. That's just standard stuff. Cool, right, let's just have a quick look at player. Do we have the health? Um, oh, it's getting set, isn't it? It won't be public, so I might not be able to see it. Okay, let's just test this out. Cool, I'm running over. So what I'm gonna do is attack, and then hopefully, he will attack us. There we go. Oh, fantastic. And as you, as you can see, he's taken away all of our hearts. And that's worked really, really well. His attack is working on us. Brilliant. Let's test that again. Make sure there's no other issues. Again, if your damage isn't working, make sure you've got that. Um, whoop, I need to fix that. <laughs> so as soon as I attack him, he attacks me and I'm losing my heart's fantastic, that's working really well. Okay, so I need my death animation to kick in now. Um, let's implement that. So that's good, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna save this again. Um, okay, cool. Um, let's, I'm just trying to remember. If our animation's in here, what we got? Planning dot attack. So that's coming from a method. Where's that coming from? Oh, we created a whole new script for our animations, didn't we? For our player animations. There it is. There we go. Cool. So what we need to do in here is call up. We need to create a new method. Let's create a new method. That would be easier. So let's do it under attack. And call this, call this public void death bracket semicolons not semicolons curly brackets cool so what we need to say in here is we need to trigger our um, our death animation we need to die so um, we've got anim that's fine and what did we call so if we go back to our animator. This is the right one. Cool. Let's have a look here. We have death. Let's have a look at our transition. We have death in our transition and the trigger is death. Okay, so all we need to do is set that trigger to death. So if we go underscore anim dot set set trigger, we then just can write death. Cool. Okay, so if we've done that, we need to go back into our player script and under here, we can then say if health is less than one, 
we can say um, if health is less than one, we can then call up our player animation. There it is, underscore play enemy, play enemy. So if we go ooh, underscore play, there it is, underscore play enemy dot death, and that will create our death method. Um, do, 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 do. right. So if we save this. Let's have a look. Let's make sure we die. Let's compile that. Oh, that's okay. That's fine. Perfectly fine. So uh, let's see if I, my death animation runs. Let's attack him. Ah, oh, brilliant, but I'm looping. Okay. I'm looping death. Okay, let's fix that. That's good, though. We've got the death animation working, but it's just looping. Let's make sure. Um, let's look at animations, death, loop time. Let's uncheck that to start off with. save that so hopefully we should just die once there might be another issue as well I'm thinking there could be so let's attack him again hearts are going down mm, still that death is looping oh no wicked but do I <laughs> brilliant um, does that death loop again when I get hit by him? Now oh, that's good. At least I can't attack him again. Um, let's have another check of that. Because was I keep? Did I keep dying when I got hit by him? Let's jump. Wait till he walks over. Attack him. No. Oh no, I do. Uh, okay, so I can see the issue. Can you see the trigger is going over and over again? It's not the animation that's looping. It's the trigger playing over and over again. So let's just say... Um, doo -doo. If we put something up here. So if we say if health is less than one we can say let's say return so return represents doing nothing let's save that let's play this again hopefully no issues no. cool let's attack him Lovely, fantastic, there we go, we just die and he can't do anything else. Brilliant. Cool, well thank you very much. Um, any issues, you know, you can write any comments to me and all my learners, you know how to contact me. Um, enjoy creating a 2D platformer game with fully utilised enemies, hitboxes, eye damage balls, um, HUD systems, you name it. Cool, thank you very much.